All right, we're getting ready to uh, assemble our cases here on our, our uh, KX250. And you can see here that we have our crankshaft support in here. And what you do is you want to put the rod all the way down and have it opposite the crank pin. These have a bunch of wedges that you wedge it in, lock your lock nut down, and now support it. So as we're pressing it together, that'll prevent this crank from going out of true. The reason I primarily never need this tool is because I'm usually heating up the bearing to where I'm not pressing it on. I'll get the bearing hot enough to just go slip on and, and be done with it. But, and then I will put my crank seal on afterwards. But Kawasaki on this has to have the crank seal pushed from the inside. And that doesn't give us that luxury to mess with the crank seal later on. So we, we absolutely need to do this on this, uh, this vehicle. So I'm going to get out of your way. Just sneak you guys in here. You're going to grab that case. And then don't touch, uh, be ready to support it where you're not going to touch anywhere where the sealant is. Yeah. We've got grease on oil seals as to not tear them. Yeah, that's right straight. And then what I do a lot, hey, you guys are doing a great job, is it kind of wiggle that a little bit? Good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just tight. Okay, so we're probably on that bearing right now, aren't we? Yeah. Nope. Okay, so there's nothing more that we could do at this point, so let's go ahead and start hooking up. We don't have to, but we like to do this to put this support washer so that this tool doesn't dig into that case. It's not absolutely mandatory, but uh, let's, uh, let's do that. You notice how many times we modify tools? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it does it surprise you? None of that stuff, you know, it's not in a manual. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now grab that guy and line up your tab. This is probably one of the little bit harder motors to put together. Thread that guy down in there. Do you not want to use washers on that? Yeah, I'd like to have a washer up here too, but we don't. We'll, we'll be okay for for now. Okay. Robert's right here. When we originally do the kit, we usually have a, another washer right here, um, not required once again. So hold that. Okay. And now we got multiple things going on. We're gonna, you can go ahead and start cranking down. We're also gonna be kind of watching what's going on back here too. Because if we have any problems with our shift works or anything else, this is our time. Does it feel like it's going smooth? Yeah. Just go right on down with it. And I feel like we're doing great back here. What's the advantage of me holding the back here? You put your pressure on it to cook, yeah. so we'll go down yeah. okay. evenly. Okay. Should be getting close. I'm feeling pretty good yeah, there. Yeah, all right, go ahead and it let it off, unthread it. <clears throat> now, went pretty smooth, didn't it? Yep. No effort, no fear, just real good smooth. Now, what made us successful, you don't always have 10 sets of hands here, but would you agree that we were paying a lot of attention back here to these shafts? Mm -hmm. If you don't pay attention to that, and you suck the front down, it's no different than we were trying to split them and we open the front too much, it's gonna be nothing but grief. So now what we're gonna do is put all of our bolts in and if we, if we just have them in a baggie, I think there's only one that they know exactly which one it goes and that's this one, isn't it? Yeah. So as you put the rest of these in, you notice how they did a nice job of having them lay, uh, lay here? And you've got one really long one, so they'll probably be able to see the longest threaded fastener here. Probably something, uh, yeah, look at that guy. And look at the height of that. So don't, th do the rest of them and don't thread any of them in. Because here's where people get into trouble is they start to thread those in and now they lose track of the fact that all of them had the same unthreaded height, okay? There you go. Yeah, hey, let me see what you got going on here. Guys, I think you're ready to rock and roll. Now what I would do is let's go ahead and, and snug this one down. I'm a big fan of a T-handle. And literally just kiss it, okay? And go all the way across. And there go in a pattern. There isn't like a specific. We can look in the manual to see if there's a specific torque pattern. What we're not gonna do in the video, you guys have seen plenty of videos of us torquing, but they've already got a torque wrench ready to go here where they're going to torque this to 78 inch pounds. So that's a six by one bolt, and that's a typical fastener that does six to nine foot pounds. Now, guys, this is another area, especially as you guys are working on these older bikes, that those, those bolts have been in and out numerous times. You really want to check them out for necking. And if you're on YouTube watching us, so you don't know what a necked fastener is, 
go to our measurement playlist and we have a video in there that uh, talks about neck bolts and how to inspect fasteners and uh, what to do there. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to let them finish up. They did a great job, and uh, this baby is going to be ready to move on to the next step.